Warning, this podcast contains spoilers and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Scary cat, have a scary chat. Scary cat with Rob and Ash. Welcome back to Scary Cat, I'm Robbie. And I'm Ash. And this is the podcast where one person who really likes horror films. And someone else who doesn't like them at all watch and talk about them how are you ashley i'm pretty good how are you i mean i've spent all day with you but that's true it's good it's important to ask every once in a while that's true i mean you know how i am but it's nice to be asked i don't always know like i know how you are but i don't always know how you are you know what i'm saying no i don't you know what i'm saying I don't know what you're trying to you do. You know what I'm saying. I don't, but I'll pretend like I do so we can stop doing this. Oh, so you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> this week, we are going to do something special. I have a tweet here from Nanika. Okay. And I'm going to read it verbatim here. Okay. I was thinking that maybe at Scaredy Cat Pod, that's us, should watch The Shrine and what we do in the shadows for the lols. Also, you're both adorable. Oh, that's so nice. I thought so too. And while I don't want to watch The Shrine. What's The Shrine? It's a movie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I've seen it. I I can't remember for sure if I've seen it or not. It's not what I want to do right now. Okay. Because we've we're focusing. Well, guess what? None of this is what I want to do right now. That's not true. You enjoy <laughs> this. You know what I mean? No, stop saying that. It's really creeping me you out. You know what I mean. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> I don't like it. So I do want to see what we do in the shadows. Okay. What do you think it's about? I was not prepared for that question. Um, you should be. We've done this like 25 <laughs> times. What What year is it? What we do in the shadows is from 2014. Okay. The year of our Lord, 2014. Yes. And it takes place in New Zealand. New Zealand. Hmm. I'm going to guess that this film is about... A pair of vampiric kiwis. <laughs> okay. Not the not kiwi is in the name for people who live in New Zealand, but is, is that in a, is that a name for people who live in New Zealand? I'm pretty sure. A kiwi. Yeah. Okay. I'd never heard that one before. Yeah. Well, I watch a lot of TV. Racist TV? Is that... No. Is it a racist term? No. It's like saying that you're like an American or like a Scott from Scotland, I think. I'm pretty so you, sure. You're a kiwi? I'm pretty sure. Are you currently looking it up? Yes. We have to decide if we need to remove this section or not. <laughs> kiwi is a nickname used internationally for people from New Zealand. All ah, right. Okay. See, I know stuff. The name derives from the kiwi, a flightless bird. Thank you. Okay. So. Which is the national symbol of New Zealand. Right. I know what I'm talking about Weird. every now and then. I didn't know that at all. Yeah, well, see, I'm smart. I went to college. That's true. Well, art school. I don't know if that counts. So, anyways. You got um, a B in color theory. I did get a B in color theory. I remind you of that every time we get into an argument, whether or not something is blue or purple. Yes, or any kind of shade <laughs> or, or any anything. kind of color issue. Okay, so I think that this film is about two vampiric kiwis who um, get bitten by a fruit bat that is accidentally imported into New Zealand by kind of a dopey butter salesman. He sells some butter in Transylvania, and then he's like, oh, I gotta go to New Zealand, and he just closes his suitcase real fast and accidentally encapsulates a vampire bat. Did I say fruit bat? I meant vampire bat. Okay. Accidentally encapsulates a vampire bat in his suitcase full of butter. In his rectum. No. I mean, you've got to you smuggle it into the country somehow. How could you accidentally put a bat well, into your rectum? All right. So here's what happened. No. <laughs> so he had three balloons of heroin that he was going to bring into the country because the butter deal, That yeah, that's just a cover. You're making my, my story into something terrible. This guy's a mule. And so he's cramming these this, these balloons of heroin up into his asshole. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> While he's got it open. Got a what bat. open? <laughs> 
What's open right His now? Anus. Ew. <laughs> what do you think he's got? Like, like what is he in? Like backwards. He's stirrups? got stirrups. Yeah, he's got stirrups. Well, stirrups are the things that you put your legs in. He's got one of those gyno things that they hold it open with. The the what is that called? Uh, spatula. Mm. The speculum. <laughs> speculum. Speculum. So he's got That's a speculum close. holding it open so he can fit those those things in there. But his friend you who's know helping him. How tiny him, your speculum would have to be. His his friend who's holding who's helping him. The one who's got like the rammer, <laughs> the rammer who, rod. Who would you pick to help you do something like that? I feel like I'd have to ask you. I could not ask you to help me do something. I don't think like I would that. trust anybody else with that. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I would not help you do that. <laughs> but you know those those rods they used to use to get like powder and muskets sure he's using that right <laughs> because he's got to get all the way up in there but then his friend needs to go to the bathroom because he's he had he had a big gulp at lunch and so do they have those in transylvania they might call him something else okay. it's not 7-eleven it's like 7-12 i don't know and they have, they, have the, they have they have the metric system so it's different <laughs> time <laughs> does not change <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so he's in the bathroom <laughs> washing his hands because the second balloon did not go well. <laughs> <laughs> and so while he's in the bathroom, our butter salesman, which is also very convenient that he's a butter salesman because it comes in handy. Ew. Anyway, so he's... Please don't put butter in your butthole. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> It's not so, a good lubricant. So you need a water-based lubricant. So you he, do not need butter. So he's bent over the table, right? And he's not watching what's going on. Could I mean, could you? Right. He's How looking, could you see? So all I can see is the ground. And then he hears a... And then like a... E -e 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 -e. <laughs> Maybe that would be it coming out, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And he's like, man. How would it live? But he just assumes that his friend is back and, you know, is continuing the deal. So he didn't know. And he didn't, he lost count. Ew. I, I have so many questions. How would the bat live inside of his butt? Or on the balloons of heroin. So it's a, so it's a. It's hopped up on heroin. So now. it's just asleep. Because isn't that what happens when you. I have no idea. In just heroin, you just fall asleep. <laughs> However, I know from all the detective shows that we watch that if that bag were to explode, he'd be dead. The bat? The person. The person. So, miraculously, both bat and butter salesman make it into New Zealand alive. Mm. Butter salesman pops the bat out his butthole. Insert sound effect. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, huh, oh, that's different. And... Easter egg, this bat is the same bat <gasps> that From Nene Texas McCall. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. Yes. He's, he's flown around. Yeah. So we'll tell you how he got to to Transylvania later next week. <laughs> next week. You can't see me winking, but I'm doing it. So I, It's best that you don't because it's, <laughs> it's creepy. My wink? Your wink is a little creepy. Oh. That one you just gave me is a little creepy. Normally, your wings are quite attractive. This one was creepy. I don't think so. I have a weird, I have a weird wink. I've seen it. It's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, the vampire bat is flitzing around, and it um, goes into a hole. These two little kiwi birds try to make a little kiwi nest. And the bat is like, get out of here. And it bites them both and turns them into little vampire kiwis. So then they have to deal with the fact that they are birds that love to just lay in the sun. And they love to flock together. And every time they try and lay. Because they are of the same feather. Every time they try and lay in the sun, they start smoking. Like not, you know. And they're really concerned because like. That's not a normal thing to just spontaneously catch fire. So they go to the little kiwi doctor. He's a little kiwi with like one of those little things on his head. You know, the little <laughs> so metal things that it, look. It's like a uh, rescuer's down under. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Show up and then. He looks like a, uh, it, the little thing that looks like a pizza cutter on their heads. Yeah. yeah. What's that thing called? Uh, a light. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, I, I think it used to be like. Yeah, it, it used to be light. a light, but like in order to use it, you have to like have a lot of skill. Like that's a whole 
section of like doctor school from like a long time ago with just learning how right. to use that weird headlight thing. What if at first they were when they're experimenting with those, they did put a candle in there and then like the wax would drip off and whoever they were working on it would just like land on them and they could ah, ah. I feel like they would have been smarter than that. But who knows? We did a lot of weird medical shit. Mm-hmm. And still do. Anyways, um, so they go to a little Kiwi doctor. He's got his little headlamp thingy on. And he's like, I don't know, guys. I don't know what's wrong. Maybe you have the flu. Have you gotten bit by any sort of a bat recently? And they're like, you know what? We did. We did get bitten by a bat. And they're like, and then the, the little Kiwi doctor is like, oh. You could be vampire. Vampire kiwis. <laughs> you could be vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you could be vampire kiwis. Sorry, the dog is attacking himself. So, um... That's your leg. You don't, you don't know that. Do. You don't know that that's his leg. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take hear that. <laughs> what? What? He did not consent to be recorded. <laughs> 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 what a jerk. so um so then we have all the emotional turmoil drax are you attending to ruin our recording today yes and it's weird for her because she's a kiwi Uh, and she likes fruit and veg what is the matter with you a lot of stuff telephone tough guy i think that's an in-person tough guy you would pet me or i would bark sorry (laughs) <laughs> so um so the kiwi bats no they're not bats they're kiwis they're vampires but okay so if kiwi is a flightless i'm gonna kick you out in a second i think he might eat you if you try did you get bit by a kiwi so if a kiwi is a flightless bird yes does getting bit by a vampire give it the ability to fly no but if a person gets bit by a vampire they get the ability to fly no they don't no haven't you seen twilight no i haven't (laughs) have you no but i've seen every vampire movie i've ever seen they don't fly really they always turn into a bat and fly away i've never actually seen that happen in a movie that's not like a cartoon the only one that can they can levitate yeah but that's levitation that's not flight that's flying no that's levitation that's flying those are different things don't call me (laughs) that's <laughs> flying <laughs> that's another word for flight no levitation Being is levitate, different than flight how is it different i don't know i'm not a scientist <laughs> it's the same thing no it's not you, if you levitate you're flying listen let's get through this and then i'll look it up and we can see that i'm correct all right so what's gonna happen to our two kiwis um we won't know it ends abruptly they say they're getting into a van they do and it's so you're so upset because you're so emotionally involved in these characters and you care about them and you care about their lives and you care about what happens to them and then it just fucking ends and it just is the (laughs) worst thing in the world (sighs) i hate it i hate this movie (laughs) (laughs) all right so we're gonna watch it and find out if it's about kiwis or not I mean, if it takes place in New Zealand, it is more than likely about kiwis. All right, we'll be back. Bye. Bye. What is your problem, dog? All right, we're back. That was What We Do in the Shadows from 2014. It was pretty good. It was adorable. It is billed as a horror comedy mockumentary. Yes. We follow ish main vampires in a little town uh called wellington new zealand every couple of years there's a big uh ball called the undead masquerade and um a couple of months prior to the ball some documentary filmmakers were given access to a couple of members of this like coven group type thing i really don't know what to call it um it's like a cove so they follow them around and uh film them just being themselves it was basically like watching an hour and a half 
version of Flight of the Concords. Which is, uh, you know, not that far-fetched because it was done by the same people. Right. And Takiki... Takiki? <laughs> Watiti, no? Takaya Watiti. Takaya Watiti, the director and actor from this movie. He plays Viago. 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 He is... Kind of the mother vampire. Yeah, and he's also the director of the upcoming Thor Ragnarok. And he got that job because he was doing those Thor Civil War... Like Team Thor, uh, internet shorts where like Thor is is waiting on Captain America to give him a call. Yeah. During Civil War, and but he's hanging out with his like flatmate. <laughs> in... Which you know I know this isn't like a a Marvel movie podcast or whatever, but I'm sick to fuck of all of those fucking Marvel movies. They they all have the same plot. And Thor, to me, was the worst of them all because right. it was so fucking boring. Pretty pretentious. But but the new trailers for it look fantastic. It's like they finally learned how to capitalize on, on uh, Chris Hemsworth's um, like comedic timing because he is very, very funny. And they finally figured it out and they finally cut his hair and they finally stopped using like pretentious Shakespearean language all the way through. I think that he makes this kind of movie. So I think Thor Ragnarok might be this kind of movie. Well, and Jeff Goldblum is it, which is fantastic. What I really appreciate is the way that like Hot Fuzz broke down like the idea of like a massive event happening and then there being like a ton of paperwork, you know? Mm. Like, it it brought you into the reality of that situation in in a playful way. It's the same thing that this did. It, it took you into, like, very real scenarios of, like, life as a vampire in the right. 21st century. It's like, it's like everything that happened around the main scenes of Interview with a Vampire. Right. And it had a little bit of, like, an Interview with a Vampire, like, feel at some point. Because it had a Nosferatu vampire that was Peter who lived in the cellar. I love Peter. Uh, they had Viago Peter, who are was. Are we gonna say who they're being played by? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Peter, our Nosferatu vampire, was played by Ben Francham. Do we know anything else he's doing? No. But he's he goes back to like. He's like the original vampire, yeah. maybe. Like when you imagine Nosferatu in the, the like stalking through the shadows. That's, yeah. That's what this vampire is. He represents. He's and then got you have... the crazy teeth and the crazy fingernails yeah. and all that mess. He's more lizard than he is vampire. Yeah, terrifying. <laughs> um, then you have Viago, who is your. It's kind of like the mom. He's your. What what they say he was when before he was before he died he, he was, was a like dandy a, he was a dandy he was an 18th century <laughs> dandy <laughs> and then he turned him into a vampire <laughs> so nobody really likes him <laughs> no I think they all love him he's like their he's like the friend that you have that makes sure that you get home safely when you're drunk that will take off your shoes and put you in bed and put a glass of water and some crackers beside. You're on your nightstand, so when you wake up, you won't feel gross. There's a there's a, a moment right at the beginning where he's going around the house, getting everybody w waking everybody up. Yes. But before he does that, he's like, "This is always the most terrifying part." <laughs> and he, <laughs> and he like quickly glimpses behind the curtains. He's like, "Oh, good, <laughs> the sun is down." <laughs> it's night time. <laughs> it's very cute. So then we meet the uh, the first other vampire we meet is Deacon, mm. who is played by Jonathan Bruch. And I think he's supposed to represent the interview with the vampire vampires, like, like the, the, the the very the Tom Cruise yeah the Tom vampire. Cruise -y vampire, just like very like very like sullen and deep, and um and I don't know what manly yeah the manly vampire and he has a servant a a familiar i thought he was the familiar no she's, she's the, the familiar. familiar so uh, every vampire has a familiar who does their bidding during the day yes we meet her her name is jackie mm. she's, she's played by a very funny woman uh named jackie von beck or beak so then we meet 
Um, his name is not Vlad, but he's basically Vlad the Impaler. Well, no, his name is Vlad. Is it Vlad? Yeah. Okay. Well, he's Vlad the Impaler. That's basically what he's supposed to look like. <laughs> they took the picture of Vlad the Impaler, but it's played, played by Jermaine... Jermaine Clement from Flight of the Concords. And also the... the uh, Rio. The singing crab from... From Moana. From Moana. He's also in Rio. He's the scary white bird. <laughs> So they build Peter up as a terrifying figure. He's the Nosferatu vampire that lives yes. in the basement. But they contrast that with the fact that he is like a loving person. Like <laughs> and, Yeah, like he's just really nice. Because he's the one that changes everybody. Like right. he's, he's everybody in that house has he's been changed by him. Brought them all together. Yes. And Viago takes care of them all. He he brushes Peter's teeth for him. Mm. And and uh, tries to clean chicken. clean up his tries to convince area. them all to to do the dishes and yeah they have a house responsibilities meeting and uh, they talk about the dishes. <laughs> yeah. This is bullshit. <laughs> Deacon is convinced that he should not have to do the dishes because vampires don't do dishes. Vlad is uh, really good at hypnotizing people, but his powers have waned over the years, which is kind of sad. There's a part towards the end where and i think vlad was probably my favorite out of all of the vampires but he was talking about uh the ball when they get their invitation and on the invitation they always announce who is like the guest of honor at the ball and he says in this completely adorable way that he heard a little inkling a little twitter twitter twatter that perhaps maybe this year it might be him and the way he said it was so sweet, and you just knew at that moment that it was not going to be him. And it was so sad. Um, they have a rivalry with werewolves. Yes. And the and werewolves the, are... the head werewolf you'll probably recognize also from Flight of the Concords. It is uh, Rise Darby. First off, it's more of a gag movie. Like The plot is very thin. Right. It's it feels like... like a sketch that runs way too but long. it's very very funny like i enjoyed every second of it there was not a minute of it that i was like oh i wish we weren't doing this because i really enjoyed it it doesn't really work with what we're doing or our format or whatever but like it's very very good we can't make fun of something that's already making fun of itself right so and that well, we're not here to make fun of anyone well i mean we can't we can't point out the ridiculousness of something that's already because making... it was very ridiculous right <laughs> There was one point, okay, so the kind of the driver of the whole thing is they have their familiar Jackie bring over two people for them to eat. Mm. Um, and so they eat the girl, dispose of her, no big deal. They turn the guy, uh, whose name is Nick, into a vampire also. And Nick is kind of like a young hipster dude. And so they're sort of teaching him the ropes of being a vampire. So Nick being like a young hothead. He's referring to himself as a guy from Twilight. Right. And so um, he's wearing a like vampire teeth necklace yeah. all the time. And they're at like a convenience store at night walking around town. And this guy says like what are you a vampire and he was like yeah and he was like sure i'm a vampire hunter and he's like yeah yeah fuck you no you're not <laughs> and he leaves turns out he was yes because the next morning they find peter they hear a noise and they run downstairs and peter's on fire because a vampire hunter has broken into the basement where peter lives and let in sunlight and it has caught peter promptly on fire vlad very uh, valiantly tries to put him out <laughs> by grabbing a vase <laughs> and splashing most of the water out before he and gets to the stairs. And then throwing it on the basement stairs. <laughs> he throws the little amount of water he has down the hole and then he goes, well, I tried. <laughs> he shuts no, he in. said, I was too late. I was too late. And so that's when Nick tells them that, yeah, this is this is the guy. And he says, he tells them what he said. And then they um, they kick him out of the house. Well, Deacon has kind of a problem with, with Nick the whole time because, right, because Nick's he... the new cool guy. In fact, Deacon talks about being the youngest and how he's like, you know, I'm just kind of the youngest. Well, and in, in my one of my favorite parts was when Deacon was kind of sitting in a chair sort of sideways, like very like Vladimir Putin-esque. 
And he says, uh, when you become a vampire, you just become very sexy. Yeah. And he just like <laughs> like gestures See, to his yes. whole body and it is the best thing. But he's upset with Nick because he doesn't I mean, because he thinks that Nick is trying to steal his style. Mm. Like he wears similar jackets or something, and that makes him very upset. So they start a trial. Crime. Also, we forgot to mention that Nick's friend Stu yes, is there all of the Stu time. Yeah, they is just, now they're all their best friends. They just like Stu, and so they just let him hang around. They decided to excommunicate Nick from the house. But they took the extreme measure of giving him the procession of shame, which consists of them literally walking around in a circle yelling shame at him. Which is fantastic. As Stu watches on <laughs> <laughs> in amusement. They end up going all going to the masquerade ball, and Nick brings Nick the vampire brings Stu with him, which causes all the vampires and zombies and demons that are there to want to kill Zo- Stu. So they have to kind of back Stu up and get him out of there. Uh, Vlad has a fight with his ex girlfriends. Which he refers to as, as the, beast, the beast. And he's shown all these pictures where there's like a there's a figure with like a a, a dick on and the chest. And testicles like in the middle of the, <laughs> its chest. And you're like, oh, the beast is going to be like a beast, like a real live like beast thing. But it, it even causes him to like age prematurely before the... Yeah. Well, he gets upset because he finds out that she's the guest she's of the honor. She's the guest of honor, yes. And it makes him really sad and so sad that he turns into like a 130-year-old yeah. man her boyfriend is kind of like a troll looking thing yes. <laughs> and so you're like oh that's the beast because he walks up on stage with her and then it's like no nope, that's her <laughs> um they have a fight and Stu ends up killing the new boyfriend yes um, because he is trying to kill vlad they they escape and they're on the run and they run into the werewolves who are the nicest people werewolves that ever on camera i think well they're just trying to take care of everything and make sure that like no one gets eaten so they're they're trying to chain themselves to the trees they're very concerned about you know making sure everybody's okay and it's like a really practical look at what being an actual werewolf would be like and todd's yelling at everybody about not having their track pants because when they when they transform you know they'll rip right through the jeans that they just yeah the regular pants are just going to be torn to shreds one of them forgot the combination to their their lock that they put on the <laughs> on the chains. I also thought because uh, they they end up changing and they they hunt and this was kind of cool because it, it the the film which has been told in this like office style documentary mm-hmm. uh, way suddenly turns into more of a horror film where they're on the run from these werewolves. Yeah, this is the point where I felt like this got a little Im- interview with a vampire because they start talking about. Deacon starts talking about how this is what being a vampire is, that you watch your friends die. You watch all the people that you've ever loved die. And it could either be because they were... Well, he gets super detailed about it. He's like, they could be, you know, impaled by frogs, or they could be... like Laying in a warm bed of autumn leaves, and and one of them constricts their air pipe. And then... It's like, and some of them die from old age. And then he goes into this like extreme detail about like they get older and they start forgetting who you are and you wish they were dead and then they finally do die. And, and then you're sad as fuck. And, and that sad. was like really, really real. And like that was sad. I mean, it's not real because vampires aren't real, but like, like just thinking about like getting older and watching everybody that you know and love die just sounds like the saddest, most depressing thing. Stu comes back. He's a werewolf. And they live all happily ever, ever after. Well, oh, right. and Viago, who the whole has a subplot going the whole time about this girl that he was supposed to go find. Oh, right. Because he's not from New Zealand. He's from somewhere else. But his, uh, his, his familiar had shipped him. To, he got the postage wrong. So it took him too long to get there, and she had remarried by the time he got there. Right, which is so sad. So she's now like 60-something. She's living in a retirement home, and her husband, I'm guessing, is dead. Yeah. And so he would go over and just look at her through the window uh, over the course of the movie. And then at the very end of the movie, once Stu gets back, you find out that he went ahead and went and bit her and so that they could live happily ever after. And he makes a he makes a he says something about 
you people know. have problems with the age difference. She's 97. And what is she doing with a man four times her age? But <laughs> he, I don't see a problem with and it. And then he like gives the camera a big eyebrow raise. <laughs> and she is delightfully cute. So over the course of this film, what are some moments that like stuck out to you? Basically, every time that Jermaine opened his mouth, oh, there was one part where uh, he Vlad is talking about his personal style. And he said, I call it dead but delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was a big <laughs> oh, we forgot to tell you, Jackie, the the, the, familiar. the familiar, she um gets bit by Nick. Well, so the reason that she's hanging out with Deacon and kind of doing his bidding so is good. so that he'll eventually turn her into a vampire. And he turns Nick into a vampire before he turns her into one, which well, he, makes her he really turn, upset. He didn't turn Nick into a vampire. Well, they turned Nick into a right. vampire. So she gets really upset because, you know, it's sexist. And she right. said she says something about if I they're had not a, equal opportunists. If I had a dick, I would have been a vampire a long time ago. Right. But they're all wearing blouses and doing homoerotic shit and so, you know, I'm stuck mopping up all their blood. One moment that stuck out to me was uh, Viago, who's been a vampire for hundreds of years. I think they said like four hundred and something years. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's still terrible at being a vampire. So every time he bites somebody, he nicks their major artery and makes a huge mess. <laughs> yes. And he's always like, oh no, I did it again. <laughs> and he just like, he's like trying to catch all the blood in his mouth really quick. It's all very funny. There's one joke that is every time they want to fight, the vampires, what they really do is they just lift up into the air and then they like have this <laughs> stare off in the air. Like that video that everyone's probably seen of two cats trying to fight where they just like stand up on their back legs yeah. really funny. We'll have to we'll have to post that video somewhere so that everybody can see what we're talking about. But that's basically what's happening. It's a joke in this, but in the movie uh, Queen of the Damned, it is a legit style of fighting that they use over the course of the music of uh, the movie, and it looks just like this. Oh, really? It is so ridiculous. Isn't that uh, that movie that Aaliyah was in? Aaliyah was in it right before she died. No, no, no. It was not before she died. It was actually filmed. Uh, I want to say like five or six years before she died, and shelved because it was terrible. But then after she died. But then she died, and it gave people a reason to want to put it out. Turned there. into a Tupac situation. Yes, but it was still terrible. I don't it, think I ever actually saw it. I, we'll have to do it at some point. It is it is horrifically bad. I'm excited. I loved the part where Deacon, Vlad, Nick, and Viago were sitting in like a diner eating after they got kicked out of the ball or whatever. Oh, no, no. V uh, Vlad wasn't there. It was Stu. Stu was there. And Stu was eating a plate of french fries or chips, as they say. <laughs> and um, Nick reaches over and grabs one of the chips off of his plate and he puts it in his mouth. And they were like, oh, no, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. <laughs> yeah. And then it cuts to the next scene is um, uh, Nick just like like projectile Torrents vomiting. Like gallons and gallons and gallons of blood. Yes. But yeah, so that was uh we what we do in the shadows. It it it's a movie that makes fun of itself. I mean it's a mockumentary, that's its yeah. point. That's its purpose. So Alright, is this film gory? I mean it's bloody. It's not like It's played up for laughs. Yeah. It's almost like Quentin Tarantino blood. Now I'm gonna ask this and I've got a bit of a twist on, on the way, what I think, but Okay. Is this movie scary? No. It was it was very emotional, but scared was not one of the emotions that I felt. See, I think if one of our children would walk in during the scene where the werewolves were oh, attacking them. Yeah, for sure. I think it would have given them nightmares. For sure, but they're children, which because is why you don't allow children to watch such things. As far as the Beck Del test goes, you they kind of make the joke that this is like a sausage fest and they talk about how this is like it's a guy's club and and like if she makes a joke about if she had a dick she would already be bitten like right i think one there's two women in the whole movie one of them is demonized for being an ex-girlfriend mm, the beast and the other one is 
like pushed off to the side and and used pretty regularly until she kind of takes her own future into her hands and she fixes it herself. And then she turns her husband into her familiar yes. and makes him do her bidding. Um, but it fails the Bechdel test miserably right. because those two females never interact. But again, I think that was kind of the point. I think it was it was it was played up as a sausage fest, and they called it out as that because that was the parody they were making. It's possible. I didn't really get so much that they were trying to to pull that out, but it's possible. It's not a bad way to spend an evening. No, it's full. It's very enjoyable. I was on board from the second that you told me that it was <laughs> Jermaine. If you like Flight of the Concords. You will enjoy this film. Thank you, Nanika, for suggesting that one. We enjoyed it. Yes, thank you. Thanks to Brandon Tuzio for our intro and outro song. You can find us for all of your social needs. Well, not all your social needs. All your social needs. You might be into some freaky shit that we we're not We will into. be your mama and your papa. <laughs> What? we won't <laughs> no don't make don't send us those messages no we will be i'm, I'm <laughs> winking <laughs> i'm winking you can't see it but it's happening um you can find us on all of the things at scaredy cat pod we'll be back in your earbuds <laughs> next week yeah with uh, our third installment of the texas chainsaw massacre leatherface texas chainsaw massacre three but that's it for this week Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Adios, muchachos.